In this video, we're going to be demonstrating how to use Keras to make predictions on data. We're going to continue working with the same model and the same data that we've used in previous videos in this playlist. So as a prerequisite to this video, I'd recommend you watching all of the previous videos in my Getting Started with Keras playlist first so that you can fully understand where we are and what we're dealing with in this video. And all of those videos will get you up to speed on where we are and they'll cover the prerequisites needed to get started with Keras, how to pre-process data for training, building a model, training a model, and creating a validation set for your model. So assuming all of those prerequisites have been met, we're going to show how to now make predictions on data with Keras. As mentioned before, when training a model, the hope is later that you can take this model and apply it to new data and that the model will be able to generalize and accurately predict on data that it's not seen before. So say that you had a model that was able to categorize images of cats and dogs. So it was able to label whether or not an image of a cat was a cat and a dog was a dog. And say that the training data that you used was on cats and dogs from a particular data set online that just had hundreds and hundreds of pictures of cats and dogs. So at a later point, you might want to take this model and give it your own images of cats and dogs, maybe of the cats and dogs that you've owned during your lifetime. And you want to see if it's able to accurately label those images as the respective true labels of cats or dogs. So that's basically what we're going to be doing here too in this example. So in our case so far, we've trained our model on some training samples and we've also validated our model using validation data that we discussed in our last video. And given the results that we saw with our validation data, it looks like this model should do well on predictions, but that's what we'll see coming up here. So first we need some new data as our test data that we're going to use for predictions. Currently we have a training set and a validation set, new data that the model will be predicting on is typically called the test set. So I've created a test set already that has some data for individuals who were involved in another made up medical trial with a similar experimental drug. And I generated this data in almost an identical fashion to the way that I generated the training data. And as mentioned in an earlier video, when you're training a model and using a model to make predictions, the data that you have will likely be real world data. You're not going to be actually generating made up data like I am here. I'm just using this generated medical trial data as an example for these videos. So on my screen right now, I have this section for pre-processed test data, and this is showing how I generated my test data here. So if you'd like to pause the video and take a look at this, then please feel free to. It is very, very similar to what we did in the pre-processing data video earlier in this playlist. So just take a look at that. And so the story here is that we have our model that was trained on data from one medical trial with an experimental drug, and we want to take this model and apply it to a new medical trial that has a similar experimental drug, and we want to see if our model is able to generalize and make predictions on how this experimental drug will affect individuals who are involved in the trial. All right, so scrolling down here to the predict section of my notebook, I have created a variable called predictions. In Keras, to actually predict, all you do is call the predict function on your model. So I still have my same model here, and just to scroll up and show you, we're in the same notebook, and I'm using the same model here that we've used in the past. So scroll back down, and so I'm calling model.predict, and I'm passing in this scaled test samples, and this is here within my generated test data. I have my scaled test samples and then I'm giving it a batch size of 10 and this is arbitrary. You can increase or decrease that number and I'm giving it a verbosity of zero and the verbosity is just how much we want to be able to see when the predictions are running and I'm, I'm choosing to display zero right now because there's not really any useful data that I want to be able to see here. So if we run this, it runs really quickly. To see what the actual predictions look like, I'm going to iterate through this for loop and print out all the predictions to show you. Okay, so we have two columns here, and as you can see in every element within this structure, we have a tuple, and if you look, each one of these, each tuple adds up to the number one. So 78 and 22, 18 and 82, 54 and 46, etc. So they are all adding up to one. Now, the reason for this is, is because these two columns contain probabilities. This first column is the probability of a zero or a false, which is what we're saying if a patient did not have an adverse reaction to the drug. And this second column here is for predicting a one or true, meaning that the patient did have an adverse reaction to the drug. 
All right, so this is what you get whenever you call model.predict. Now you can also, instead of getting these probabilities here, you can have Keras just round to the probability that it's closest to. So in this case, with a probability of false at 78% and a probability of true at 22%, Keras instead would just give us a zero, meaning that the prediction was a zero here instead of a one, reason being is because it had higher probability of being a zero than a one. So I've created another variable to illustrate this called rounded predictions here, and it's almost exactly the same as this model.predict, but it's model.predict classes with the same exact parameters passed in. So if I run this now, I'm going to now run through another for loop. Instead of iterating through the predictions, I'm going to iterate through the rounded predictions that I just created here. So let's run this. And as we can see, we have zeros and ones now rather than these probabilities. So if we look here, like I said, our model is predicting a 78% probability of this individual being a zero or having no adverse reaction. If we look down to the corresponding, we are seeing it's giving us a zero. Now in this one, it's giving us an 82% probability that this individual is labeled as one, meaning they are having an adverse reaction. And if we look here, we see a one. So that is how you can use Keras to make predictions on data that it wasn't trained on. Now before we wrap up here, I do want to show you that I have the labels for this data that we just predicted on. Now you notice when we called the model.predict or model.predict classes functions, we know we're specified the labels. So Keras is not able to tell us how well we actually did on our predictions by comparing it to the labels. Now as I mentioned, I do have the labels stored and Keras hasn't seen them yet. In the next video, we're going to use a library called scikit-learn and we're going to plot a confusion matrix here within our Jupyter notebook so that we can actually visually see and observe how well our model did at predicting on this data here. So we're going to basically be comparing the predictions that it's outputting here to the actual labels of the data here to see if it did a good job or not. Because we're not able to make a conclusion here just looking at these predictions because we don't know what the labels are to compare these to. So we'll be doing that in the next video. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like the video, subscribe, suggest, and comment. And thanks for watching.